All right, so how do you know if something is going to be radioactive or not? How do you know if an atom or a, a, a particle is actually going to emit uh, and be un unstable enough to emit some alpha particles, gamma particles, or beta particles? Um, we're going to talk about nuclear stability and what makes something stable and what makes something a, nu a nucleus unstable. Um, we have to talk about the, there's a, there's a slight balance between the electrostatic charges within the, nu the nucleus and the strong nuclear force within the nucleus. And we'll get to what that is mean in just a second. So we, let's think about it. We have a nucleus. And inside the nucleus, you have a lot of protons and neutrons. But let's talk about the protons. All the protons are positively charged. And we know that when two, two uh, charges that come together that are like charges, when they come close, they're going to repel each other. So how is it that this, that this nucleus has all these particles or all these protons that are positively charged so packed closely together? Well, that's because there's this thing called the strong nuclear force. And it doesn't have really have a fancy name, but this is what it's called. Um, and there's not really no, a lot known about it quite yet. Um, but what this, this force is, is that um, it acts on subatomic particles that are extremely close together. And these, this is much stronger than the repulsion that those protons are, are feeling from each other. So this nu strong nuclear force is actually, when they get really, really close, that repulsion is actually eliminated, and they're actually going to be like melded together. And if you think about it, there are some neutrons in there also, so the neutrons are no, have no charge. So when they get close to protons, that's okay. But when uh, so we like that connection. That's even, they're even strongly pulled together. But when two protons come together, we have they have to. It's going to be negated. The strong nuclear force is going to be a little bit less because they have to negate the fact that they're being pulled together, they're being repelled. I'm sorry, because they have opposite charges. So the, nuclei, the neutrons also help keep the, the nucleus together. So because we're talking about this balance between the electrostatic forces that are keeping them apart and then also the strong nuclear forces keeping them together, we have to have a good ratio of neutrons to protons, a stable ratio. If this ratio gets off balance, that's when the, nu the nucleus becomes unstable and it'll start emitting particles. So we want this ratio to be in a, in a good place. And what does that mean, ratio in a good place? So for low atomic numbers, they found that, the, that a really good ratio is a one-to-one -one ratio. For every proton, you have a neutron, and that's, that is apparently very stable. But as you get into larger, larger atomic numbers, you're actually going to need more neutrons to overcome those repulsions that protons are feeling. So we're going to have to need more. So we're going to need 1.5 for every one proton, 1.5 nuclei, uh, sorry, neutrons for every one proton. So let's take a look at lead. Lead is sometimes can be, different isotopes can be radioactive and different isotopes are not, depending on the number of neutrons that are in it. But let's look at this one. Um, this is a mass number of 206 and an atomic number of 82. This atomic number tells me I have 82 protons, and this mass number tells me I have 124 neutrons. 82 plus 124 will equal 206. Okay, so let's find the ratio to see if this is an okay ratio. Well, when I put a ratio of uh, the neutrons on top of the protons, it's uh, 124 to 82, which then ends up to 1.51 1, 1 over 1. So the ratio is 1.5. This is a large atomic number. That's okay. Uh, this is actually a stable one. This is the maximum that it can be. If this was 208, then we'd start going under nuclear, uh, we'd have a nuclear reaction. Um, but this is 206, and the ratio is 1.5, so we're okay. So how do I get those numbers, those figures? Well, let's go over here. Here's what we call the band of stability. Here at the, the bottom um, line is the neutron to proton ratio that's one to one. So this is a slope of one. Um, this top line is a, is a ratio of 1.5 to one. So this is as a slope of 1.5. Where this dotted line is in the middle, this kind of fuzzy dotted line, that is where things are stable. So if you find, if you figure out the neutron to proton ratio, and you find that it's within this band of stability, then you're not going to have a nuclear reaction. You're actually, the um, nucleus is pretty stable. It's OK. But if you find that you're outside this, like you're down here or you're up here, you're going to actually have a nuclear reaction or some sort of nuclear decay. Um, and it could be a fine thing. It can happen every millions of years and we're OK. Um, or it could be something disastrous. So we want to make sure that um, we're in this band of stability to make sure that we have a stable nucleus. And that's nuclear stability.